What's up, guys? Oh, we got a good old dike in today. Um, we had actually somebody is out. Slap this panel off. And said they had a leak in the condenser. We it was late in the day, so they didn't. I don't even know that they pinpointed the leak. That's what I'm seeing now. Um, condenser was like. I don't know over a month out so I'm here to see if it's even possible and attempt this repair like I said I don't know if he pinpointed it but it's obviously up here in the condenser somewhere so we're gonna get some nitrogen uh, I've got a larger dryer but I've got a dryer first of all I'm gonna have to get the top pulled up on this thing uh, get in there to that coil and then we'll put some nitrogen on it and see if we can't pinpoint the leak. We're going to have to pinpoint it first and then see what it's going to take to fix and if we can fix it. So uh, that's where I'm at. Let me tear this thing apart and we'll get back in here with some nitrogen see if we can't find this leak. So Got a little bit of pressure on it. We're gonna bump it up. See if we can't pinpoint this leak. Like I said, I don't know. I think when they saw it in the coil like that, they just said, hey, you, you need a you need a condenser coil, which is probably a good call. This is gonna be a fun one to fix. But we gotta find it before we can try to fix it. I don't know if that was nitrogen on there or refrigerant. So I didn't even attempt to get my detector out. But it's gonna be back inside that coil, I would assume. I don't see anything bubbling here on the header right there yep right there in the back so <sighs> let's try to get in there a little bit further we're probably gonna have to cut some of that header out <sighs> this was they were told this was an attempt at repair, so I'm gonna see what I can do. I'm probably gonna have to take all this loose. I might have to take this top off to get to it. So this looks like you can see there's my leak. There's an indention right here. It looks like from the manufacturing process. I can't tell if I don't think that one's leaking, but I'm going to start here with the leak I can see. I'm going to have to try to cut this piece of the header out so I can get in there to it. Otherwise, I'm pissing at the wind because it's right there where that... You can see where it's bent this way. I'm guessing it just wore on that spot. Because the rest of it's pretty flat. It's just bent up here on the top. So we may have more leaks, but... Uh, I've kind of been warned, like I said, coils so far out, we're just trying to make repairs at this point. So let's see if we can't get in here to this thing. Um, fix one leak and just make sure we ain't got no more and kind of go from there. So we did a little more damage trying to get to it, but um, that there was the original leak. And I didn't create anything up here. I just bent it up pretty good. And I kind of nicked that tube there. So, but it's just the top two tubes here. So I'm gonna get in here. We're gonna, we're gonna damage some of this, but I've already done enough damage as it is. Uh, I may try to get just where the rest of that is indented. I may try to get some more of this out just so I can hit everything back here. Cause everything, 
that, that indention, whatever it happened from the factory or whatever, is putting, you know, kind of twisted, putting pressure on those copper lines. That's where our original leak came from, so I don't want it to leak again. Let me try to get that out, but I can at least get to all of these right now and get some solder on them. It's going to have to be easy with the heat because these are freaking little tiny quarter inch tubes. So I have to make sure we don't make anything worse than I've already made it. But we're on our way to maybe having this leak fixed. All right. So we got the bottom. I got that one cut out too. Um, we didn't really disturb any of this. So I've got the back out enough and I kind of bent this in. That way it's not rubbing on any any of that header that I cut we've got a good gap everywhere so none of this will rub again now I just got to get a torch in here we'll uh, clean it all up first a little uh, steel brush make sure it's all good and clean and then we're just gonna go hit every one of these joints with solder it's not gonna be pretty but I'm gonna hit them all real good and we'll put some pressure on this guy and see if uh, see if we did any good maybe we stop some leaks I didn't see any more. That was the main part of the uh, header that was damaged. You can see the header was split in the middle, so it was pretty easy to get in here and just snip around that area and just kind of work it out slow. Let's go get a torch and steel brush and get all this going. It's not beautiful I wasn't going for beauty but I think we got everything we needed uh, you saw how far away I was with my heat with these tiny tubes man it's it's tough but I went ahead and beefed up the connections there and then we just got a good bead of solder all over all that so we'll put some pressure on it now I think we'll be all right uh, put some pressure on it first make sure I'm not leaking up here anywhere and then we'll go ahead and get on that dryer we'll Stop at about 100 psi and then spray some bubbles I don't hear any leaks, so that's a plus shoot the rest of that header just to make sure nothing else is leaking and we're gonna let that pressure sit for a little bit I don't see any bubbles right now so we'll let it sit in uh, at least 30 minutes to make sure this thing holds and then we'll come back and do the dryer
I'm not seeing any bubbles over here. So I think we got all our leaks there. And I don't see anything else on the header. And we're holding pressure. So I like to set mine just a little bit above wherever I'm at. So that, you know, 102 PSI mark or something. And I know if it hits that 100, I've got a small leak somewhere. So that's how I like to do it. We're gonna let it sit, like I said, at least half an hour, make sure we don't have any more leaks. And then we'll try to uh, change the dryer. We'll pressurize again, let it sit. And then we'll pull a vacuum on this guy. It had a little bit of pressure in it, so the vacuum shouldn't be uh, too difficult. And this guy ought to run as long as we don't have any more leaks. We get to try my new vacuum pump for the first time today. And the HCFM field piece have not used it yet. The only other thing I saw is these filters are dirty. So we'll talk to them about that. We'll have to maybe run and grab some filters. That way we don't have to come back for a filter, dirty filter and frozen coil. So it's been exactly a half hour. We haven't moved a bit and I don't see any bubbles. So we're good there. I got a dryer. And then my new beautiful field piece vacuum pump. Um, we're gonna see how that does. I'm excited to use that thing. Uh, I'm probably gonna pull through my gauges so everybody can yell at me in the comments, but this is what we're gonna do. I've only got the two ports. They are high flow core max valves, so uh, I'm not gonna change them at this point. I'm trying to keep the cost down for this customer. They weren't leaking, so we're just gonna make sure when I pull my gauges off that they're not leaking and make sure we get good caps on them. We'll probably put brass caps on and do away with these plastic things. But we're holding, so I'm happy with that for right now. Let's let the pressure off and get a new dryer in here. So we're back just over 100 PSI. I'm gonna let it hold again. I'm pretty sure my dryer's good, but we'll make sure we don't have any leaks. So I'm gonna let it sit for a little while once again, and then I'll clean all this up and we'll start our vacuum. So I couldn't be happier with this. We got everything cleaned up and secured there. It's been another, about a half hour, and we haven't moved a bit. So I'm happy with that. Pretty sure we don't have any leaks. Actually 100% sure we don't have any leaks. It's held for two times 30 minutes. No pressure drop at all. You can see our coil is clean, see some light through it. Um, I did go ahead and I'm not gonna be able to clean up the oil, but I was able to brush the worst of it off the outside so it doesn't look terrible. We're gonna get this hooked up. I'm not sure where I'm gonna hook my vacuum gauge yet, but we'll be able to isolate and just make sure I got a good vacuum on this thing. It's not too big of a system, so shouldn't take long even going through my gauges see how this new vacuum pump does so we're ready for vacuum make sure everything's tight and I don't really know how to use this thing so let's find our power switches over here I guess we got to plug it in first that'll help Gas ballast is right here. I got a red light flashing at me. I have to figure out how to use this on the fly. I'm not sure what the red light is. So we're pulling a vacuum. The flashy light. Checking that gas valve. The flashy light was telling me something was wrong. So I did check my voltage, but from that leg to ground, I've got 211. From every other leg, I've got 120. Honestly, I just checked one of the legs to ground. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the hell's going on there, but. 
Um, anyways, at least it didn't blow up. It told me something was wrong. So we're pulling now. We're gonna let it pull while I go grab some filters and uh, let it get down to about a thousand. We'll be able to isolate my valves and be able to see what my vacuum is. We'll give it a little decay test. Like I said, it shouldn't take that long to pull this thing down. And then I get to put this thing back together. That top's gonna be the biggest pain in the ass. been empty for a while we hit 11,000 she is smoking Field piece is kicking ass I like it um, it's not helping that I'm pulling through my gauges but I don't have anything to remove those cores or anything so they are max flow valves we'll see how it goes but I'm liking this thing the flashy light uh, is telling me my gas balance is open the yellow flashing light and then uh, it saved me from trying to blow up my new pump because that's what I tried to do, putting 210 volts to it. So, good job, Field Piece. Uh, I'm not cool enough to have a promo code, but True Tech Tools is a good place to buy this stuff. I know a guy who does have one, so just type in survival and get 8% off at checkout. We're gonna let this guy pull for a little longer. I'm gonna get screws back in, got the top back on, uh, and then we'll run and grab some filters because they're gonna have to have filters before I leave. There's all the header that we cut out. So it doesn't look like a whole lot, but everything went back together pretty good. I got some Armaflex tape behind there because that discharge line was hitting uh, that metal piece. It hadn't rubbed out yet, but I like it better with something back there, at least it's halfway protecting it. So let's we'll see how this goes. Probably let it uh, get down to about a thousand and kick our gas ballast off. We may have to change our oil. Um, doesn't look bad yet. So we've been pulling for, I don't know, probably about an hour. Uh, I'm down to 2300 microns, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut the gas ballast off. We'll get a little bit of crap out of there. A lot of that was from the ballast, but I can see, I don't know how well you all can see, but my my oil got a little bit cloudy just being just pulling like that. That screen is hot. Um, so we're gonna let it pull like that until I get back with filters and then we may change the oil. We'll see where we're at and kind of go from there. I did do a little decay test just at like 5,000 microns and it was holding pretty good. So I don't have any leaks in this thing. I think it's just set for so long. I don't know how long this thing's set before uh, we actually got the call and found the thing. So let's grab some filters and we'll come back and see where we're at. So we're back. I got some filters. We were about 1,200 microns. I did talk to the guy, just shaking the compressor up a little bit and it's raised up. Um, this was refrigerant on this. He did not put nitrogen on it. So that pressure I had was still refrigerant. So I'm just pulling out of the oil right now. So I'm happy with where we're at. Uh, I don't know what's been done with this thing before. So I'm gonna try to get it down as low as I can, but um, we pulled pretty good. Might go ahead and change the oil just because it's so easy to do with this and let it pull for a little bit longer and see how low we can get it but it's not going to be like i said it was refrigerant in there so i'm not terribly concerned we held for the second time for about 40 minutes on the nitrogen pressure so i'm not concerned about any leaks we'll see where we get let's get the filters changed i gotta make a list of the rest of the filters i think all i think all of these guys here that one's the next suite over I think these back here, there's two maybe. I'm not exactly sure. Oh, that was easy. This thing makes it so nice. It took me, I don't know, less than 30 seconds to change that oil while it was running. You can see that oil 
it was still fairly clear looking in my sight glass, but I could see it change from where it was previously. And I mean, you can see the, the discoloration of it. It's picking up stuff out of there. Like I said, I don't know what's been done with this before. It's been, you know, leaks repaired or whatever's been done and who was doing it. So, uh, but I'm pretty happy with where we're at. We're gonna let it pull for a little bit longer with the new oil and go from there. And just to make sure closed our vacuum off. And we're holding pretty good. We jumped up to 1400. There's still just refrigerant in that in the oil. So it's probably not gonna be a perfect vacuum, but I know I don't have any leaks, so we're gonna continue to let it run. Get some refrigerant up here and do what everything else I gotta do and get ready. And then we'll charge it up here shortly. So quick tip here, I'm trying to figure out which units do what. Um, pretty sure I did a video on that front unit. It's for another office area. Did that years ago. I didn't know about these two, but I can follow in little strip malls like this. I got two gas meters down there. This line is feeding and it should separate barring any additions or things getting changed around this should be the only units for this space fed on this gas line here so you can see these are two different gas lines feeding up to those three there so these two aren't theirs and then our gas line here feeds the unit we're working on that unit over there and then these three so I'm just getting it prepared I kicked my disconnect on I've got a Y disconnected although it should be out on low pressure, it shouldn't run, but just to make sure, I'll verify that we've got our three phase. 240, 240, 240, there goes my blower. Got a little jumpy there. So we got uh blower running. I'm gonna get my probes connected, charged with my gauges and then uh, throw my probes on to get some halfway accurate readings. I don't know what this is gonna look like. Um, as like everything else, it's liable to have airflow issues and all kinds of other stuff, but we did get new filters in it. So coil, condensed coil looked clean. Uh, the evaporator didn't look bad. So we'll see where we go from there, see what she looks like. All right, so this is why you always take your valve cores out if you can. Um, just takes forever to pull a vacuum. We hit about 800 microns, 860 right now. So uh, I'm happy and I know we haven't got any leaks, so I'm not terribly concerned about that. It shouldn't have anything in it. Uh, this had refrigerant pressure on it when I got to it. So we're gonna let it pull while I go ahead and set up all my probes, except for my uh, pressure probes, obviously. And then I'll get, uh, I'm gonna dump the refrigerant. Uh, it holds, nine pounds two ounces i believe 145 ounces or something so we'll dump that and then get this guy started up should have a call from the thermostat uh set it down to like 68 all i gotta do is connect my yellow wire and this thing ought to kick right on well, let's see how much it takes I'm going from the high side so we can see no restriction i'm coming back i don't probably have the full nine pounds in there but we blood our lines and all that good stuff so we're just gonna watch you take as much as we can and then uh start getting my stuff off see if i need another tank i'll go down and grab one all right so i got about seven and a half pounds out of the other tank that makes my nine two which is what the main plate is uh yes the filter dryer was a little bit bigger i'm not terribly concerned about that right now we're just watching uh, everything looks pretty normal, so we're gonna let it all settle down and equalize out uh, Amp draw Compressor 14 amps. I have to check to see what it's supposed to be, but it's seems normal um, So we're gonna give it a little while to everything to equalize and even out and check to see where we're at So now we can come down and enjoy the air. Um, everything looking pretty good Got the Ecobee thermostat, not my favorite, but um, 
It's nice and warm in here. Everything's still stabilizing. But uh, super heat sub cooling out, all that looks good. It's piston, so we're gonna go by the super heat, which I'm assuming is, let's see what it's saying my target should be. Target's five, so I'm a little high on the super heat, but happy with it. Let's see what our temp drop is. We got a good temp drop. Was that 19 degrees, 18 degrees? So I'm happy with it. We're gonna let it run for a little while. Um, everything's pretty stable right now. It's still giving a few minutes. I'm not sure why it hasn't stabilized, but we're gonna watch it, see where we're at. But I'm happy with all these readings so far. Couldn't be happier with any of these readings right now. Um, I got a nice cool compressor. And I've been right around those marks for the last, you know, 15 minutes. It's not really changed. We're doing 18 and a half degrees. Uh, this thing's 16 years old. I couldn't be happier with the way it's working right now. Um, the amp draw on the compressor was supposed to be uh, rated at 19. So we're running 14.7. 14.2, I mean 14, this thing's doing everything it can right now. We got the leak fix, that was the biggest thing, I think it's 16 years old, it's dropping all kinds of condensate out now. So I'm going to start cleaning up and we'll let it run while we're cleaning up and then uh, I'm going to get the hell out of here. The sun went in now, it's been kind of in and out of these clouds, but it's not been too bad today. Leave me a comment guys. Leave a trade better than you found it. We'll see y'all next time.